How much should you be spending on a sewing machine? We are diving into that question. And welcome to The Sewing Report. I'm Jennifer Moore, helping you discover your love of sewing crafts and DIY projects. And it is the ultimate question for the beginner sewist seamstress. How much should you spend on your first sewing machine? And I'm here to tell you that's kind of a trick question because it's gonna be different for everybody. So when I started out sewing, I didn't know anything. I didn't really know what I was doing. I ended up buying like a vintage sewing machine that wasn't exactly user friendly, beautiful machine though, although I haven't really used it in a while. And then I ended up getting a kind of an entry level computerized brother machine, the SE400, great machine. And I will link all of the sewing machines I can below that I own or uh, that I recommend. So, and I've also done a few other videos and live shows about sewing machines. So if you'd like to check those out, I will also link the playlist. I currently own five sewing machines. So I started off with the brother and then after I kind of outgrew that, I, we ended up giving it away. I own a vintage Singer 2012, an ever sewn Sparrow 25, which is definitely a great entry level budget machine. I dropped way too much money on this Junomi 7700 and I will go into that. I also have a Sailrite zigzag machine and then I have the Brother Serger, the Brother 1034D Serger. Some of these machines serve different purposes. So in my opinion, I think it's good to have unitaskers. I'm kind of lazy and I don't like switching out a lot of stuff. So I really prefer to have like a separate Serger sewing machine, if I ever get an embroidery machine, it's gonna be a separate unit. And I, I borrowed a cover stitch machine from Pink Castle Fabrics a while back to do some videos. And I would prefer having two separate machines versus like a serge or cover stitch combo. Just cause I just hate switching stuff out. You have to change the thread. Like it's just such a pain in the butt. I don't know. So you're probably wondering if you're just starting or if you don't own a sewing machine, how do you figure out what to buy? How much should you spend? And do you really need like one of those fancy expensive sewing machines? I was talking to a friend a while ago, it was actually a guy. And he was like, do you like those fancy ones? He's like, are those really necessary? And I think that's a good question. There are so many brands of sewing machines. And over the years, I've you know learned a little, little bit about some of them, but to the person coming in from the outside, you know, you don't know all the brands. In fact, I talked to a lot of my friends and they said they'd only really heard of Singer and Brother. They weren't really aware of like the Berninas, even not even the Junomis in some cases. They didn't know Faf or like Husqvarna, Juki for sure. You know, people unfamiliar with this world. They just don't know any of that. And it's, I see it sort of as like a chicken and egg scenario. Of course, you have to have a sewing machine in order to start sewing, but if someone, doesn't sew, what's gonna get them to buy and start using a sewing machine if they're not into it? And one thing I think would help, I've seen a lot of classes being offered by like sewing machine dealers or like other types of sewing businesses. And I see one thing on the registration or the information that I think kind of deters people. And that for many of the classes I've seen advertised is that the person already has to have a sewing machine and bring it to class. Now, if you're someone and you you don't know if you like sewing and you want to take a class on it, are you going to buy a hundred or two hundred or three hundred dollar machine to take a class you don't know if you're going to like on a subject you don't know if you're going to be hot on or not either? So I can definitely see why someone who's kind of interested in sewing, maybe that's you, would be a little bit dissuaded or like, you know, am I really going to drop three hundred bucks on something? only to find out you don't like it. Here's the other caveat. I know a lot of you in the sewing community see machines under like $100 being throwaway machines, meaning if they break or something goes wrong with them, they're not worth getting fixed. You should just throw it away because the repair cost would be more than it would to just get a new sewing machine. And the other thing I've heard about some of these lower end machines is that they're not very, good to use. Again, I've heard mixed things and I think some, I've seen some great reviews on some models that are under $150. So, and I personally had a good experience with a machine that was uh, under $400. This one is certainly under 400 bucks. 
And this one I paid, I really, I paid $2,500 for this about three to four years ago. Do I think it's a great sewing machine? Yes, I do. Do I think that the difference between this one and the Eversone is worth 20, what, $2,100? I would have to say no. And I would say if you're looking at the Janome, like memory, like the Janome Home Series, I think a great, less expensive option is the Janome Skyline series, and I will link one below. I think they have, they have like the large throat space that if you're a quilter, might be good, but they also have a lower price of about a thousand, some of them are about a thousand dollars. They can go up a little bit as well, but I think compared to $2,500, there's a few more bells and whistles this one has, but is it worth the extra $1,500? Probably not. In fact, I spent $1,200 on like the premium Sailrite zigzag machine package. To be honest with you, I haven't really used it. I know that sounds terrible. Still trying to figure out what to do with it. But that's what I mean about not buying too much machine or one where you, you know, you haven't tried it out or you don't know if it's for you. Again, that's a lot of money to spend on something that you, that you never use. On the other hand, if you are curious about sewing but you don't want to buy a machine, what do you do in order to get access to one to figure out if you're gonna like it? So here's some recommendations. Try to find a local sewing class or sewing studio or a lesson or a workshop where the machine is provided. These can be a little bit more rare, but I'm seeing them pop up every once in a while. I think more businesses need to do that though because you have to understand that the target customer you want, the person who doesn't sew but wants to, probably doesn't already own a machine. So if you can provide them with a, you know, starter one, like a $200 one, that's easy to use. They might be like, wow, this is actually pretty cool. I like sewing, the machine's pretty easy to use, not very frustrating, I'll buy one. But if they never get to use it, how are they gonna know if they like it? So going to a class or trying to check something like that out might be a good way for you to test drive your machines. You can also, of course, go to a sewing machine dealer and try to see if they will let you try out the different models. Um, but again, if you, here's the thing about getting into sewing though, when you're buying a machine and you're not sure what you wanna sew, I think it's really difficult for you to make a decision based on a lack of knowledge because you, if you get into sewing and you find you like quilting but you don't wanna make clothes, I would make a different sewing machine recommendation to you versus if you were doing clothing or garments or dressmaking. So I think that's one reason why if you're new to it, I might wait to buy a machine until you figure out what do you wanna sew with it how hardcore do you want to get with it? If you have a friend or friends with sewing machines, I would also recommend trying to see if they'll let you come over to the house and try out their machine. I would also recommend if you can try out different makes and models. Don't just go to one store and be like, oh, baby lock, these are cool, that's it. Test them all out. Try out Janome's, try out Eversone's, Brothers, Singers, Fofs, Husqvarna's, Bernina's, Juki's sale rights like honestly get to sit down and in front of it in front of as many machines as you can because each brand might feel different or so some people love Janome, some people hate them some people have loyalty to different brands and you need to figure out what machine you feel the most com comfortable with and has the features you want so if you have a friend who sews see if you can try out their machine i'm sure they would be happy to let you do that because Let's be honest, people who sew want more people to sew. Another thing you can do is try to seek out sewing conventions or expos in your area. There's one called the Original Sewing Expo, I believe, Expo. I, again, I'll links. I'm gonna include as many links as I possibly can. They have workshops you can take classes where they're in sponsored studios. So for instance, I've gotten to try out Bernina's, Baby Locks, all kinds of different machines just because I signed up for a particular workshop and you get to really see what these machines are like. And you also get an extended period of time to try them out. So I've taken a few three hour workshops and you get three hours with the machine to see how you feel about it. I've got to try out like a $6,000 baby lock ovation serger. Again, not something I'm gonna buy because I don't wanna spend 
$6,000, but it was cool to try out and I got to see what it was like just to use that particular type of machine. So if you are trying to figure things out and you don't know where to go, that's what I would recommend. Either go to a sewing machine dealer go and go to more than one. Go to several different dealerships and see if you like them. Again, you can, because most of the people I know who get sewing machines now, they're either at Costco or like Sam's Club, they see a machine and they just buy it without like really doing any research. Or they go, like me, you know, I go on Amazon for everything and I look for good ratings. There are other things you can do to try out sewing machines. So that, cause again, it is kind of a big purchase to commit to even a hundred bucks for people is a lot of money. And there are ways that you can actually try out these machines. So sewing machine dealers, friends, look for classes in your area where the sewing machine is provided or like sewing expos or sewing conventions. Great places to be able to actually test drive these machines and kind of see them out in the wild. So some other thoughts I've got about sewing machines. Now this one, the retail price is about $400. I have been very impressed with the performance of the Eversone Sparrow 25. I've been using it for over a year and it's not failed. I've never, I've not had any issues with it. In fact, I've never had a sewing machine that needed to be repaired. Maybe it's just me, I do sew quite a bit. But I, even my like cheapo brother serger that was 200 bucks, haven't had a single issue with it. So maybe I've been very lucky, but also don't think, hey, this is gonna need to be serviced all the time because I'm gonna be honest with you, I haven't had any real problems with it. By now you're probably thinking, Jen, well, how much should I drop specifically on a sewing machine? I would say it depends on your budget, how much you enjoy sewing, what you need to do with the machine. If you're just doing real basic stuff, you could certainly get away with getting like an under $200 machine from Brother, for sure, if, if again, you're a sporadic sewist and you just wanna do simple stuff. If you wanna start doing like hardcore quilting, you may wanna look in like the Janome Skyline series. If you're super hardcore and you wanna do long arm quilting, those are gonna run you about uh, 20 to $30,000. But I would definitely say, look at reviews. You want a machine that is fairly decent quality. Look for metal parts versus plastic. Also look at reviews, talk to people about what they like, and also think about what features do you want. Now, here's my caveat. I am very averse to debt and I am a very much a living below your means kind of gal. So here on the sewing report, I've decided that I'm not going to do, I'm not gonna to try to encourage you or promote doing anything that I wouldn't do, and that is going into debt. So I know a lot of sewing machine dealers offer financing. I wouldn't go down that road personally. If you do, or if you don't have a problem with that, again, there's no judgment. You can make up your own mind. But I see sewing machines, even though I love sewing, obviously, I still see this as a bit of a bit of a luxury. This is not a necessity. I can survive. Like if I was stuck on a deserted island and I didn't have a sewing machine, you know, I, I would I would be able to live. Probably not not very happily, but I would be able to live. So I don't want to promote you doing anything that would wreck your financial future. And a, financing a sewing machine, if you don't have the cash for it, if if it's me. I'm not buying it because I want I want to pay for things in cash. So that's my personal philosophy. If you disagree, that's totally okay. We can't agree on every single thing under the sun. And I totally understand that, but I just wanted to share my stance with you and kind of why I go that route. Because a sewing machine, if you if I don't have the money for it, I'm just I'm just and that's my philosophy with everything. If I don't have the money for it, I'm not doing it. We have decided to not really pay for anything with financing. That includes cars. Uh, we have no car payments and we recently got out of debt. We don't really wanna go back into debt. So that's why that's not something I personally encourage. And I'm sorry, sewing machine dealers. I know you guys all offer financing, but you know, this is just my, my you know, personal moral compass here. And I just can't, I, I can't in all good faith tell you to do something that I wouldn't do. So you won't see that over here. Here at the Sewing Report, I also don't discriminate against any particular sewing machine manufacturer. I will talk about any brand from Junomi to Eversewn to Singer, Juki, Sailrite. I'm kind of curious to try all of them just because I, 
I think there was different things to like about each one. So I am not one of those brand snobs and I've encountered them in the wild a little bit and sometimes that can be a little bit frustrating. I understand that you might really love something but that doesn't always mean it's right for someone else or that the other person might feel that same way about a certain sewing machine maker that you, that you do. So I also want to encourage you if you are trying to help someone buy a sewing machine or if you're trying to buy a sewing machine, don't let that influence you just because someone else is like, you should only buy this particular brand. You know what? You got to figure that out for yourself. So I am not particularly brand loyal to anyone. I will talk about different makers. I'll talk about whoever because you know what? I don't have any exclusive deals. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video about sewing machines. I know this is a little bit rambly, but uh, you know, I've been kind of feeling this one for a while and I wanted to get these thoughts out. So if you enjoyed it, hit that like button and subscribe to the sewing report. If you enjoy everything from sewing, DIY, and crafts, I'm Jennifer Moore, and I'll see you back again for another video. Mm -hmm.